The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Now, firstly, what does the formal charge tell us? Well, as it says here, the formal charge informs us of whether or not an atom in a molecule gains or loses an electron relative to the atom in its isolated form. For example, once you find the number of uh, valence electrons in the, uh, in the atom for in a molecule from the Lewis electron dot structure and you compare that to the, uh, the isolated form of the atom, and if the two electron, uh, excuse me, if the valence electrons are not equivalent for the two atoms, then the uh, atom in the molecule has either gained or lost electrons and is therefore said to have a formal charge. Now, if we, uh, if the atom in the molecule gains electrons, then it's going to, as you might expect, have a negative formal charge. And if it loses electrons, you may, as you might expect, it's going to have a positive uh, uh, formal charge. Now, we'll skip over the second bullet, although it is important, we'll come back and take a look at this in just a moment. Next, we'll uh, take a look at uh, calculating the formal charge. Of, uh, of an atom in a molecule. And to do so, it's fairly simple. All we're gonna to need to do is just take the number of valence electrons in a free atom minus the number of valence electrons in the bonded atom. And the valence electrons in a bonded atom can be found through the following form formula, which, which is just the number of non-bonding electrons plus one half of the number of bonding electrons. Let's do an example now on the next slide to really solidify our understanding here. Example formal charge. Assign a formal charge to each of the uh, atoms in tetrafluoroborate ion. Now we're given the uh, the formula as well its uh, as well its connectivity here in Figure 20. Now we'll begin here with uh, fluorine. We'll find the formal charge for fluorine, and then subsequently for the boron atom. Now, for fluorine, let's first go ahead and find the number of valence electrons in a free fluorine atom. Well, we know that uh, fluor fluorine is a main group 7 element, thus the uh, neut a neutral fluorine atom is going to have 7 valence electrons, right? And as, as you see here, it has 7 valence, uh, valence electrons in a free atom. Next, let's find the number of valence electrons in a bonded fluorine atom. And that's simply just going to be the number of non-bonding electrons, right? And as we see here, each fluorine atom has six unshared electrons, right? Right there. And there we are. So that's going to be, I'll just write it up here, six plus, and it also donates one electron to for the covalent bond as well, right? So it donates one electron for the covalent bond, as we see here which is just simply the one half of the number of bonding electrons. Six plus one is seven. Now, because each of these fluorine atoms, as you see here, they are equivalent to one another, we can then just say that the formal charge, right, for uh, the fluorines is simply just gonna be the valence electrons in a free atom, seven minus the valence electrons in the bonded fluorine atoms, which is seven, is going to, the formal charge is just simply going to be zero. Now, the we should also note that the sum of the formal charges for all the atoms should equal the charge on the ion. And we see here that the charge on our ion is is one, right? Is one. Therefore, are the that that negative one formal charge. Is, must be on the boron atom. Now let's, because of the fact that we know that fluorine's formal charge is zero, thus this, ne this negative one formal charge must be on the boron atom. Let's proceed to our next slide and uh, take a look at that. All right. Now here we, uh, we'll begin here with boron and finding the number of valence electrons in a free atom. We know that boron is a main group three element, thus a neutral boron atom is gonna have three valence electrons. Now, the valence electrons in a bonded atom, well, here, as we see, boron 
does not have any non-bonding electrons. However, boron does have, I'm just gonna one half of uh, the bonding electrons. Boron does participate or contributes one electron to each of the covalent bonds for a total of four electrons, right? Thus, the number of valence electrons in a bonded uh, boron atom is going to be four. And the formal charge for boron is simply just gonna be three minus four, as we see here, is gonna be negative one, as we, had, uh, as we had predicted on the previous slide. Now, when you're gonna be indicating the formal charge on a compound, you can do so in one of two ways. You can do so by indicating the formal charge right on the atom, as we've done here on our example to the right, or, um, or it can be demonstrated as an overall charge on the, uh, for the entire ion, as you see here, uh, given on the uh, left here. Either example is, uh, is acceptable. Now, the, the real value of calculating formal charges comes from their application to resonance structures. Let's take a look at that next. Remember that second bullet that we had left alone? Let's take a look at that now. As it says here, formal charge it aids in determining the relative stability of resonance structures. Let's let's uh, do an example and really explain what that means. Okay, taking a look here. Here we're being asked, what is the mo uh, the more favorable Lewis electron dot structure for nitrous oxide? Is it going to be A, B, C, or D? Let's uh, do an explanation actually on the next slide here. Now, looking here at figure 22, we see that we're given all three uh, resonance forms for the nitrous oxide. Now, because all three forms are not identical, one of the three forms here is uh, actually going to contribute the most to the actual structure and chemical reactivity of nitrous oxide. And uh, more generally speaking, the resonance hybrids are always weighted uh, more, uh, more strongly towards the more favorable uh, structure. Now, in order for us to find the most favorable Lewis electron dot structure for uh, nitrous oxide, next what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to uh, ascertain the, for the formal charge on each ion on each ion here for each resonance structure. Now, we've already gone ahead and given the formula in the previous slides. Thus, this would be a great time for you to pause the video and really sharpen your skills on finding the formula, the, the formal charge on, uh, on atoms. Thus, I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video now and attempt that. Now, for the rest of us that are comfortable finding the, form, uh, the formal charge, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and continue and uh, display the answer now uh, on uh, on our slide here. And there we are. The formal charge is given to us right up here. Now, notice one thing that the sum of the the uh, formal charges for each structure is equal to zero, and that makes sense, right? Because this the charge should equal the charge.